Hey, what's up? What's up, fellas? <laughs> My name's Danny Trejo. Some of you might have seen me once in a while on TV. I, uh, I'm kind of at a loss for words, because I, uh, first of all, I, I love doing this. You know, this is one of the things that has kept me out of prison since 1969. My number was B948. I remember this director once said, Danny, kick in this door and intimidate. I kicked in the door. I was, God, where did you study? Dale's Market, the Far East Market, Vaughn's. All right, fellas, let's do this. They make movies and stories about guys like Danny, and actors are portraying those people. Danny is that guy. He's been in trouble since he was a kid. It just got worse and worse as he grew older. I'm always astonished by how he lived that life and survived. A lot of times, you cannot make an amends for that. You can't clean that up. I feel Danny has paid his debt to society. I don't think Danny feels he has. Falling down is one thing. What do you do when you get back up? That's Danny's life. And it all comes back to where he started. My dad grew up in Pacoima, California. He actually grew up in this house that we're, that we're in right now. Back when there was a dairy farm over there, dirt roads, dirt alleys, just poor Mexican neighborhood. This was life without seat belts, life without cell phones, life without some houses having telephones. From the time you were four, you just went out the door and hopefully you came home at dark. Pacoima and San Fernando was just transitioning from farmland. When I moved out there in the mid-50s, it was orange groves. We moved right into an orange grove. You turned on the faucets and mud would come out. Pacoima and Silmar and all those communities were really just starting to grow up. There used to be this old man that walked around with this pony. I don't know what he charged, but I remember my mom seeing the pony. I got on it and they put this little scarf on me. I took a picture with that pony. It was this kind of sense of ownership that all the kids had. We're creating this. Chevys, lowriders, big Buicks. Back in the days in San Fernando, Pacoima, they did a lot of cruising. Everybody was really into their cars. Particularly with the Mexican community, the Chicano community, it wasn't to get the fast car, the, the race car, the thoroughbred that could make it across line first. They were show horses. They did slow, so they paraded around with their little slow moves. It wasn't like, look at me be fast. It was, look at me be slow to admire the power. Remember cruising around with our 13 years old in the back seat with a, a, a quart of Miller Highlight. <laughs> I couldn't wait till I could get, you know, a, a car, a convertible, a so low or something. How you doing? All right. <laughs> Machete cruises. <laughs> right now we're in a 60, I'm sorry, a 56 Chevy Bel Air, 350 Chevy engine. And this is a monster. Now, this is Brantford. This is the street that I lived on. It was really a good neighborhood. You know what I mean?
much. <laughs> I can actually beat that guy in there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Foot took over. <laughs> I love that. Neighborhoods were neighborhoods. I mean, the lights went down. You know, the sun went down. Things changed. The kids didn't have anything to do, and there was no money, and there was no employment for them or nothing. Your parents were gone, working probably, so they got into mischief. The atmosphere in Bacoima was that of a lot of tension. Bacoima was like the murder capital of Los Angeles at the time. Bacoima, San Fernando, North Hollywood, Van Nuys, all the Latin communities used to like just be at war. There were no automatic weapons. There were none of this people driving down to shooting everybody to get one person. There was no head of the mafia because the mafia hadn't even been formed yet. It was a lot more civilized, but it was still there. That's my old junior high school right there. McCormick Junior High, we were like crazy there. This is Pacoima Middle School. It used to be Pacoima Junior High School, and then they changed it. Everybody calls it Richie Valance Middle School because he went here. Me, Mike Cerna, Malcolm Armanderas, Julian Valdez, Eddie Valenzuela, they were like my dogs, man. I got here in 1957, I think, when I moved into Pacoima. I got kicked out of here, went to San Fernando, but I never got in. I got in a fight on the steps. None of those buildings were there. There, there used to be an alley that went all the way like that way, those old houses, and we used to steal wine out of Dale's Market and go drink in that alley. Hi, how are you? What's that? The weird trip, boy. We first got our television, I was about 10. And I missed about 15 days of school. Growing up, he's always loved Westerns. And if you love Westerns, you love John Wayne. When I was 12 years old, I found out John Wayne was an actor. And that was a real shock to me because we thought that the Duke was a historical figure. When my kids were little and John Wayne came on the screen, I'd say, stand up, this John Wayne. And they would actually like stand up and we would all salute John Wayne. He's like, that's the Duke. You have to salute the Duke. He always had these great sayings. Life is really tough. It's even tougher if you're stupid. <laughs> I like that. He was a hero. He didn't have to wear tights. He didn't have a cape. You know, he didn't fly. He just kicked ass. Pedro Gonzalez Gonzalez, he worked with John Wayne, which was actually one of the first Latins. When you saw him, you knew that your limit just increased. Wait till I'll show you what is in this package. In my neighborhood, you could either be a laborer or a criminal. I mean, you just didn't see a lot of lawyer Mexicans and a lot of doctors. 